Hello, everyone. So I'm back with another chapter for informatics practices students, and it's called data handling using pandas. So in this part of the video, what are you going to be learning? I will introduce you to the pandas library. I will introduce you to two important data structures of the pandas library. That's the data series and the data frames. And then in this video, I will teach you how to create series or data series in pandas. Okay, so let's get started. Now, pandas basically means panel data, okay? And it's the most popular Python library used for data analysis. Now, you might wonder what is data analysis? Now, for example, uh, when your uh, CBSE results were out, let's say your class 10 results were out, don't you think your school does a data analysis? Doesn't it uh, check who's the top scorer? Doesn't it check what's the average score of the school? Doesn't it check that who's the top scorer uh, in, uh, let's say, each uh, subject? So that's just a, you know, a small example of what you mean by data analysis. You are analyzing the data and calculating some things. OK, and probably later on, uh, you could even be, you know, plotting some graphs or uh, something like that. OK, so uh, the pandas library, like I told you, has two very important data structures called the series and the data frames. OK, in this uh, part of the video, we'll be concentrating on series. But let me tell you what's the difference between a series and a data frame. Now, a series is like just one column of a table. So can you imagine that you have a table with you, a table that you have learned in SQL, a table with you, and the table consists of only one column, okay? So that is what a series is all about, okay? Or you could say it's a one-dimensional figure. If you remember um, what you say about one-dimensional arrays, it's a list of elements, but one dimensional, okay? It has only one axis, okay? But when we talk about data frames, data frames is a two dimensional structure. When I say two dimensional structure, what does it mean? That it will consist of rows as well as columns, just like your table in MySQL, okay? But in this part of the video, like I said, we're concentrating on the series, uh, uh, what do you say, data structure of Python. So let's get into how do we create series now. There are various ways of creating a series in your program. But before you create, uh, start creating series, now this pandas library is basically an external library. That means it doesn't belong to Python originally. It's an external library. So if you want to use that library in your Python program, then you will have to install that library. And how do we install something? You must have learned this in when we were talking about the NumPy library also, that we say pip install pandas, okay? But if you're going to use the Anaconda Python distribution, then you need not uh, write the statement pip install pandas because pandas library or is already pre-installed, okay? And then we know once we have a module or a library, and if I really want to use it in my program, I need to import it into my program. And how do I import something into my program? You write the word import and you write the name of the module that you want to import. That's the basic structure. You must have learned in class 11 uh, that when you wanted to work with the math module, you wrote import math, correct? But here I have written import pandas as PD. So what does this PD stand for? PD here stands for an alias name or another name for the library pandas. Now, what's the advantage here? A couple of functions of the pandas module that you, you will be using. You remember in math, you used to write math.sqrt, math.pow. So here also you would have to write pandas dot whatever and pandas dot function name. So in that scenario, instead of writing pandas, 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 now we could start writing it as PD. Okay. So I hope you understood that as PD, what does it mean? Now, PD is not a reserved word or anything like that, but that's what generally 
an alias name for pandas is given, you could have written actually anything else also. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's get ahead. Now let me teach you how to uh, create a series. And to create a series, there are various options available. Okay, let's start with the creation of the series. The first method for creating the series is creating it from a list. We know what is a list? A list is a homogeneous or a heterogeneous elements uh, enclosed within square brackets, correct? So here I'm creating a series using a list. You can see I'm using a list. OK, but to create any series, whether you're going to use a list, whether you're going to use a NumPy array, whether you're going to use a dictionary, as you're going to see, you are making use of a function named series. So there is a function named as series, which is in the module named as pandas. And that is the reason you have written pd.series, like you wrote math.sqrt. So series with a capital S note, it please is the function that is allowing me to create the series. Now, this function called series that you write, okay, well, let's say pd.series takes some data in the bracket. That data could be a list, that data could be a numpy array, that data could be a dictionary and so on, okay? So in this example, since my data is a list, I talk about creation of a series using a list. And the series thus generated is stored in the variable called series one. Now, when I print the series, please note the output carefully. 10, 20, 30 has come as one column. And I told you series just looks like a column of a table. Then what is the zero, one, and two? Zero, one, and two, these three elements are called the index of your series. And by default, it is zero, one, and two. The first element getting zero, the second element getting one, and so on. Now this indexing method you must have seen in NumPy arrays as well as list. Every element has an index number associated with it, which is 0, 1, 2. Okay, so here also the index is 0, 1, 2. Now, the only difference here when compared to NumPy arrays and list is here I can change the index. Okay, how do you change the index and all? I'll tell you a little later. Now, what does this D type int 64 here mean? The D type int 64 here means that your series consists of integer 64. Now, on some systems, if you run this program, it could be showing an int 32 or an int 64, depending upon the system. But it's definitely going to be telling you that it is an integer. So this is how I create a series from a list. And here, the index numbering is automatically the index numbering that is generated by the system. OK, so let me just clear before I go ahead. OK. Here, if you look at this example, what am I trying to do? I have a list with the names Kavi, Sham, and Ravi. Okay. In the previous example, I directly put the list in the function called series. Doesn't matter. Here, I have a variable called names. And what do I have there? I have a list of names. And then I'm making use of the series function. So this names doesn't, uh, what does it represent? The list that we have just created. So instead of putting the list directly in the series function, I have a variable and I'm using the variable. Same, I mean, unlike the previous one where I directly had the list in the series function, that's up to you. Then I want you to concentrate here. When you say index is equal to three comma five comma one, what does that mean? The first element that is Kavi will get index number three, Sham will get index number five, Ravi would get index number one. We could assume the index numbers as roll numbers of these particular students or something like that. Okay, so if I'm going to be displaying this series, you will see that you will see Kavi, Sham, Ravi as one column, but the index numbers are not zero, one, and two, it's three, five, and one. Clear? Okay, I want you to concentrate on the D type that is shown, that's data type. It says object. Now, what does that mean? In pandas, strings are referred to as objects. So if it was floating point numbers, it would show you float. If it was integers, it would show you int. But if it's going to be a string, then in that scenario, it is going to show you as uh, the data type as object. Clear? So I've taught you how to create a list, sorry, a series using a list with its regular indexing or if you want to change the indexing.
file. Okay, let's get ahead. Now I'm talking about how do I create a series from a NumPy array. Now, if you remember the, what you've learned in the NumPy arrays chapter, there are various ways of creating NumPy arrays by using a function called array, like you see here, or by using a function called ones, zeros, a range, lin space. For those of you who do not know what this means, I would suggest that you go and check on my uh, creation of NumPy arrays and then come back here. Okay, so here array one is nothing but a NumPy one dimensional array. And what does the one dimensional array consist of 10, 20, 30 and 40. Now this one dimensional array now is a parameter to my series function. So can you see in when I wrote pd.series, what have I written? I've written array one. So here I'm creating an array, not using a list, though they look almost similar, but you know the differences when you've done the chapter. Okay, but here I am using the NumPy array. And what will I see? The output elements are going to be 10, 20, 30, 40. And uh, if you look at the indexes, because I've not changed the index, it remained with the default index of 0, 1, 2, and 3. Clear? Okay, so we've learned how to create a series using a list. We've learned how to create a series using a NumPy arrays. Okay. Let's talk about uh, creating a series using a dictionary. So I have a dictionary here called dict1, and it has different key value pairs. Key is India, uh, what do you say? The value is New Delhi. Key is UK, the value is London. Key is Japan, and the value is Tokyo. Now, what happens when you create a series using a dictionary? Now, in that scenario, what exactly happens is the indexes of the series is the keys of the dictionary and the value remains as the values. So instead of showing me 0, 1, 2 as the index numbers, it shows me India, UK and Japan as the indexes like you see here. And D type is object because your value are strings basically and strings is termed as objects in uh, what you say in pandas. Clear? Okay. Now, one more thing that you need to understand is just because we give another name to the index, it doesn't mean the default ones are cancelled out. Okay. They still continue to remain there. Now, what if I want to create a series using a dictionary, but I don't want to use all the key value pairs. I want to use only certain key value pairs. Then is there a method out or a way out? Yes. Okay, look at my dictionary. The name of my dictionary is calories. So I have calories with key value pairs, day one, 420, day two, 380, and day three, 390. Now I want to create a series, but I don't want all these key value pairs. I want only certain key value pairs. Then in that scenario, you can again use the parameter called index. And in the index parameter, only give the name of the keys that you wish to see in the dictionary. So I wrote index is equal to day one comma day three. So what does this mean? My series, which is named as my VAR here, is going to con contain only two elements of the calories dictionary with key day one and with key day three. So if you see it, you got day one and day three. Okay. Now, another question that could arise is what if I gave the index as day one and day four as shown here? and day four does not exist in the dictionary, then what happens? Is it going to be giving me an error or anything like that? Let us uh, let me show you the output. It's not going to give you an error. It will pick up day one because day one exists. But since day four index doesn't exist in the dictionary, along with it, the value associated with the index day four is NAN. NAN stands for not a number, or in fact, you can talk about it as absence of a value. You've seen this in NumPy arrays also. Now, when any of your value is an NAN, and if your values are numeric values, okay, numeric, so it could have been an integer. If you saw 420 was an integer, but it will all get converted to float if any one of your value is an NAN. Okay, and your uh, column consists of only numeric values, then all the numeric values are treated as float. And that is the reason, if you see here, 
that you're getting the data type as float 64. Clear? Okay. Now, suppose I want to create a series, okay, and all the elements of the series, I want it to be the same value. Then I say I create a series from a scalar value. So I have a single value here, if you notice, single value 10, and I want to create the entire series consisting of this single value 10. Okay, now you might wonder that for how many rows, because it's just a single column, but for how many rows will it show 10? That will depend on the number of elements you have specified with the index parameter. So if you see here, the index parameter is one, two, three, four. So that means your series will consist of four rows. Okay, and each of those rows are going to be having the value called 10. Okay, so if I show it to you here, I have index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4, okay, and that has 10, 10, 10, 10. What you need to be careful here or note here is that if you're creating a series with a scalar value, you have to provide the index because the index determines how many times it needs to be repeated. Now, if you want to repeat it only once, then you write index is equal to and one single number, okay? Not necessarily a number, your indexes could also be strings. Okay, you could say index is equal to uh, roll number one. That's it. Okay, so the index parameter is important in the series function if you're creating a series using a scalar value because it is the number of elements in the index parameter that determines the number of rows in your series. Clear? Okay. Let's uh, talk about something else. Now we're talking about creating a series and creating indexes. Now, what I want to tell you is after you have created a series with a certain index, is there any way that you can change the index? Let's say you've made a mistake or let's say you don't want that index and you want something else. Do you, is there any way of changing the index? Yes. Now, if you look here, I have a dictionary called Dict1 and I've created my series using that dictionary. Okay, so when I say print series one, what do you expect to see? You expect to see the key India and New Delhi next to it as its value. Then you expect to see UK with London. And then you expect to see Japan with Tokyo. Correct? Okay, now what has happened? Look at this statement. I've used made of a property called i uh, sorry, I've made use of a property called index uh, of series. And with that property, I'm changing the index. That means I am saying now I don't want India, UK and Japan anymore. I want it as one, two, three. So what happens is all this gets replaced by one, two and three. But remember, once you change the index, the old indexes don't remain there. Okay, so India, UK, Japan are no more there. Now your series is going to be having indexes one, two, and three. Is that clear? So I hope you have understood the small or the basic difference between uh, what you say, a series and a data frame, and you've learned how to create a series. I would also like to mention something here. If I talk about the characteristics of a series, the series is homogeneous data again. Can you see it tells you a data type? So your values are all going to be homogeneous. In case you create a series which is mixed data type, we know what happens with NumPy arrays. It converts it into one of them, correct? So your series is a homogeneous data type. The size of the series is immutable, which means once you have created a series of four rows, you cannot now increase or decrease the size. The size will remain as four. But the data in the series is mutable, which means you could get into your series and replace any value. We will learn that. But so series is a homogeneous structure. Its size is immutable, but its data is changeable or mutable. Is that clear? So I hope things are clear in this video. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.